Yo, 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 it's Ross, and I got a fig for you guys I want to review today. And this is a fig that is highly regarded as one of the earliest, most hardy, reliable, and tasty varieties you can grow. So another, another short-seasoned, rainy climate uh, winter, guys. Uh, it's called Ronde de Bordeaux, and this one is a, a relative, I guess, or found in the same region of France as Violette de Bordeaux. And you can see here, I got a couple figs ripening. Very early variety. This thing will ripen for you guys without any head start whatsoever uh, in August. You know, we're getting, it's now early August and the fig season's really kicking on. You know, I've said this before. I've done videos on Azores Dark. That's ripening. Suwadi has been ripening. Brandon Street Unknown. Um, what else has ripened? LSU Champagne. I have another very early fig called Rasty's Persian Unknown. Um, I have about nine fig varieties that have ripened thus far in the season. The Trace Displace is another one. Little Ruby is ripening right now. So these figs are quite early. And uh, it's a really nice thing to have because it has been raining here. I'm not going to lie to you, but it's still warm. And with that warmth, um, really produces nice figs. You can see on the tree, this is the, the Ronde de Bordeaux fig. It's got some nice cracking. I bet you I could leave this on here another two days, you know, but the rain has been kind of messing with things. I already picked one off of here that I ate yesterday. You can see this is the leaf pattern. Very distinct leaf pattern. And when it has these long fingers like this, um, it's like one of five different figs. Uh, I have another fig that I think I've showed you guys before in one of the fig tours that has leaf structure very similar to this that I had just got from a friend. So hoping it's different than uh, Ronde de Bordeaux, but. Um, you know, if it ends up being the same thing, I'm not too upset because this is a really reliable, tasty fig. Let's let's pick it off here. It just came off real easy. You can see this this portion right here was where the fig was leaning on. It was leaning right on the leaf stem. So this stem right here, this was like that, and it caused a nice scar in the fig. It feels quite heavy. Um, like it feels thick like it feels like there's maybe even some honey in here and um, I don't know if you'll ever see honey dripping from the eye of Ronde de Bordeaux but it is quite a beautiful fig and uh, in this weather it's not really getting the full color that it normally would um, I think the full the the whole thing would be black and not really this reddish yellow color up here the whole thing would be black uh, so you can tell this is definitely ripened in a crappy climate, a humid climate. Let's cut this one open. Um, for a lot of you guys, you may have even have, ha have tasted this fig. I've eaten this fig numerous times. But uh, this is the first year I'm getting this really from my own tree. And what's interesting about this fig, how it's different, is that it. people say that it has the the Bordeaux berry flavor to it, which is like a wine, almost resinous flavor. Uh, it's an interesting berry flavor, uh, unlike many other figs. This is a weird berry flavor. Violette de Bordeaux has it similarly, and I can agree. It, it is very, quite unique in terms of its berry flavor. And for that reason, a lot of people love this, this and Violet de Bordeaux. Um, there looks like there's honey in here, which is going to give it a lot of sweetness. But you can see that the interior is more of a meaty interior. And this is where certain figs have a different texture to them. Um, in my mind, there is three different textures of figs. There is a more jammy texture that literally feels and tastes like jam. Uh, there's also a juicy or meaty texture, which in my mind um, is more of like a uh, it really has a lot of meat to it like it, it seems like there's more fig than there actually is there there's a lot of, it's really thick um, 
and it really is all dependent on the flowers, like the individual, uh, I guess it's the female parts of the fig, each individual part, like little vesicle of the fig itself. If you know what I'm talking about here, maybe you can see that, but there's like these little strands that come out from the out exterior of the fig and go towards the center. Those are like the female parts of the fig. And it's all really dependent on that, I think. So when that has a different component to it or is different, that's why you get a different texture is my, my theory. There's a third texture, which is actually Violette de Bordeaux. Uh, that one has a congealed gel texture, which tastes like fruit leather, tastes like a uh, fruit roll up. You know, it's um, more sticky, like a jam that you overcooked that got really uh, sticky and um, more hard. So this one I think more has a meaty texture, but when you get a honey, when you get honey within it, it really makes the texture more palatable. I'm not a huge fan of the meaty textures, guys. Jam is the way to go over all three of them. In my mind, it really makes a nice difference. Um, so, but the honey really lessens the fact that there is even a, a meaty texture at all. So let's try this thing. Let's see what the deal is for you guys. All right, so this one was um, more on the jammier side. There's a little bit of green, not green, but unripe fig flavor, which is more of like a melon. Um, there's also some honey in there, and that honey's really good. Adds to a lot of sweetness, and there's also some berry, and. I think if I let it ripen obviously longer, you'll get more honey, it'll be sweeter, you get a more intense berry flavor that people talk about when they're talking about um, berry figs. Overall, it's an eight. Um, it's pretty sizable too, for whatever reason. I'm getting pretty large sized figs. I'd say they're probably about 50 grams a medium-sized fig and every Rondé de Bordeaux that I've eaten has been much smaller so for whatever reason uh, my RDBs are, are larger and I think it has a lot to do with uh, maybe water or the fact that there's just really not that much fruit on that tree um, and a lot of the energy is being pooled into fewer fruits which are making them uh, larger so Anyway guys, that is Rondé de Bordeaux, 8 out of 10, but overall it's extremely productive, it's hardy, and like you could put this thing in the ground here, no problem. If it dies back to the ground, it'll fruit for you that year, every year. So I really should do that, I should try to put one in the, in the ground. I don't know why I didn't air layer a branch off of that tree, but maybe next year, and uh, maybe I'll consider even... I don't know if that's top 10 for flavor, but for overall, it's it's uh, it's a really nice fig to have. So, yeah, I mean, if you're a collector or you grow things in the uh, the colder you know colder climates, it's really one for you. It doesn't do that well in a warmer, drier climate. So California, uh, Arizona, you guys are not actually going to like this fig nearly as much as other figs. Trust me, um, there's people that have been reporting that, whereas a lot of people in my neck of the woods regard it as a highly flavored fig. Uh, people in other places that are much drier don't really like it. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that little uh, video on Rane de Bordeaux. Again, I mean, it's a really great fig. So anyway, everyone, um, I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.